I'm Rob Chaffee, and this is Comedy Reset, a live stream where comedy creators and industry insiders talk honestly about their careers, creative process, failures, fears, and what it's like to be in the game. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us today. I'm so happy to have you here. Really, I am. I mean that. <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm kind of trying to be sincere. It's a wonderful day in your neighborhood. I, I hope you all had it. I hope you had all had a wonderful day. And that uh, for some of you, you, may, you, this is kind of the end of your work day and you're playing hooky on the last hour. Good. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> Maybe you take a little extended lunch if you're on the West Coast of the United States. And, uh, you know, it might be four o'clock in the morning in uh, Malaysia, but I bet you're watching there, too. This show is live right now, unless you're watching it later. But right now it's live. And what we want you to do, we have an amazing panel of comedy creators and industry insiders today, but we really want to hear from you. So start typing tick tap tick tap tick tap in the comment section either below or to the side, and we will read your questions about today's very interesting and uh, universal, it seems, topic around the comedy industry okay that's my extemporaneous little part now i start reading stuff let's meet our panel for today's discussion and i gotta do the clicky clocky thing here quick <laughs> and oh, then oh, we are, oh, are we on we're gonna be on here you go all right let's meet our panel Rich Parisi is a stand-up comedian who started his comedy career in 2019. He's performed at colleges, bars, comedy clubs, and other exciting venues in and around the New York area. His comedy is offbeat, thought-provoking, and offensive in the nicest sort of way. <laughs> Rich makes his home in Patchogue, New York. Let's hear still, still, still getting the technical stuff. <laughs> Amanda Cohen was a regular in the Chicago improv scene and is now a regular at Flappers in Burbank. She is a force of nature whose sense of humor rarely fits easily into any category. Amanda is <laughs> Amanda. Amanda is your best nightmare—a fearless, sarcastic feminist with a sharp sense of irony. Oh who will God. challenge your assumptions about older women while still relating. You're not that old. While still relating <laughs> to all ages. <laughs> she currently lives in Los Angeles, California. Yay. <clears throat> Yay. Okay. Get this down. John O'Keefe is a stand-up comedian from Dublin, Ireland, who's used – who's used the global pandemic to inject himself smack in the middle of the international comedy scene. His observations are hysterically funny while remaining uncannily astute. A former teacher, John now pursues comedy full time. Nice. And this one I got lazy. Nice. I'm going to read the same thing I read last week. <laughs> this guy does comedy. All right, let's get the show started. Alan Enlow <laughs> has been doing stand-up <laughs> since the 80s. He has <sighs> opened for Soupy Sales. Broadway legend Joel Pine Gray appeared on jo the Joan London Show and performed in Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. Alan has also done comedy gigs with Ray Romano, Adam Sandler, and oh, Jeff hi. Foxworthy, to name a yeah. few. He has performed improv with Robin Williams and followed oh, comedy yes. legends like Andy Kaufman and Sam Kinison in New York City clubs. Yeah, those were three in the morning. I'll just yeah. as an, as an <laughs> actor. I follow them. <laughs> as an actor, he play, he he has played uh, opposite James Cal Gang Gang Gandolfini, that guy on The Sopranos. Yeah, and Rami Malek, that guy on Mr. Robot. Oh yeah. He resides in Brooklyn, New York. Thank you very much. And that's our panel. What a panel. I'm so happy to have this panel because we got a real rough, we got a real tough one. Real mm. tough one today. Our question of the day is, 
How do you deal with criticism? I was very fortunate in my early career, early, early career, comedy career, to uh, get a gig as um, a host for, for a prestigious comedy club that was only in existence for a couple of years. It was run by this guy. Uh, he's, a, he's a big movie star. His name was Danny Aiello. You may be familiar with him. He was kind of rough and gruff, and he was in uh, the uh, – he threw somebody off a building in the Bronx and he, he played Jack Ruby and then and they burned his pizza place down. That's basically his movie career, mm -hmm. but he's very famous and I was very impressed and very happy and honored and, and an honor to work with him or for him. It was his club. So I'm hosting, I, 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 I'm doing a pretty good job. I think, you know, I'm, you know, I'm doing what I do. Look at you people now. are, people are kind of laughing. And I'm like, but I didn't have the greatest set. And I, you know, I wasn't really, I, I realized later, I really wasn't into doing it. I had done it 15 times over the last four months. And I'm like, all right, this is not no big deal. I'm walking. I, I kind of telephoned it in, you know? Mm. <clears throat> so I go back, I introduced the first act. I go back in. Uh, it's a little dark space, the uh, the waiting room, the, the green room, right? Little tiny closet. And I turn around and there he is now. He's six foot four. He was 75 at the time. But the guy was intimidating, right? And he's like this at me. He's looking at Robbie. <laughs> Robbie. <laughs> Robbie. Energy, Robbie. Energy, Robbie. <laughs> I don't want you ever on my stage again without being energetic, Rob. Mm. Now I'm, I'm now I'm crapping my pants because then I think I'm going to get hit. You know, it's over. I definitely thought afterwards that I'm done. This is never going to happen again, and uh, I'm not going to get fired. You know, but I resented it a little bit because I thought I did a good job. I really did, um, and I thought it was an unfair criticism until I actually looked at the tape mm. and saw what they were seeing. And, I, and I'm so grateful to that man today because I, I'm in my I'm glad he scared the crap out of me because I I really took it to heart. And I, I, I thought, I was, like I said, I thought I was done. He never he called me the next day, said, hey, all right, I want you here next week. And you okay, oh, we'll nice. but it was it was a, a lesson in, um, in in taking people's criticism. Uh, now I, again, he's a substantial person, right? But even even the most minor criticisms today, I do not try to take personally. When I'm mm. in a comic and a comic makes a suggestion, I had this great joke. I did it for years and years. Uh, it was like a topical kind of a. It was about the Middle East, right? So I would do it, and I have to describe the Middle East, and I describe this country and that country and this country and that country, and all these things that happen. And uh, it would work. It would work, but it would really slow down my act. You know, it was like almost a thirty second joke and uh one day somebody said to me why don't you cut that down what is wrong with you <laughs> you're bringing the whole show down for that one <laughs> laugh it's way too far to go and i'm like get out of here it works for years it works for years and you know what i i uh, i got sick or something and i wasn't on stage for a couple of weeks and i was like okay i do i i kind of forgot the joke and i cut it in half and it was like yep he was right totally totally right you know, so it, it's like I, I've I've learned the lesson and again too. I've been doing this for a while, and I'm I'm not a young man. I'm I've lived enough to know that I'm not right all the time. Maybe like ninety percent, <laughs> but not all the time. It, so Rob, I I I, uh, I got zapped for a minute there, and, and you know I, yeah. I I went off camera. Was the person and the and the first one that was intimidating? Was that someone that's that's uh, famous? Yes, it was a it was an actor named Danny Aiello. Oh, of course, Danny yeah. Aiello had a comedy club in Hoboken, New Jersey. Oh wow, Hoboken. One day I'll go into that story. I I yeah. I, I, I you know what. I don't try, try up names much except you know Danny. Aiello. No, but that's a good one. Jerry Seinfeld. I met him yeah. once too. And, uh, let's see. Yeah. I met Alec Baldwin. I met all these guys, but I don't drop names. 
Well, but it adds to the story. It adds to the story. <laughs> right. So <laughs> Richie, Alec Baldwin, Alec Baldwin, Alec Baldwin. Richie, when you started comedy, right? I, I knew you when you started comedy, right? I met you yes. like the first day you decided to do it. And uh, how did you feel the first time somebody said, hey, you know, Rich, maybe you should change something? Well, it was positive, a positive change or, you know, I would accept the, of course, they accept the criticism and, and, and heed their suggestions, of course. But it was just mean spirited, though. That joke sucks. Do it this way. Yeah. You know, that's not criticism. No. <laughs> that's not. <laughs> that's <laughs> called dumping. <laughs> we, need, we need to qualify criticism. That's a good yeah. point, Amanda. When we're right. talking about criticism, we're talking about constructive criticism. Okay. Right. Thank you. Right. Oh, so little <laughs> of it is, though. Yeah. So that's, little of it is. This that's is like, that's like walking up to a painting in an art gallery that's, you know, an artist spent 20 years painting and the guy goes, it sucks. Walks away. <laughs> you know, it's like, what, really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Amanda, you you've you've been in the industry for a while, and uh, I'm sure uh, you've had your yeah. you've had your share of you've had your share of experiences. I would imagine. Well, again, it's the same kind of question, though. When when somebody when you say, "Well, how do you deal with criticism?" It really depends on the source of the criticism. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. random person like yeah, i don't think that was funny it's like well thank you for your unsolicited opinion mm. um if it's someone i respect if a you know a big comic comes up and said hey i like this but can you also do this because they usually will put it in a more professional way that is gold you know yeah. if they noticed enough to make a comment uh then that's you know fantastic but the biggest criticism is always going to come from the audience. This is what makes comedy unique is the immediate mm. feedback. Um, if you're not getting a good critique from the audience in the form of laughter or at least silence that you're getting their attention, uh, <laughs> then, you know, then it's just, then you're not really learning anything. Um, and it's always those guys who went up and say, ah, I killed. It's like, did you not? <laughs> you got in, your, in, your, in your mind, you right? Yeah. And, and with regard to a bit that was 30 seconds with a laugh, I'm sure that what you focused on is the big laugh at the end. Yes. And then, yeah. but somebody else wisely pointed out, it doesn't need to be that yeah. long. And what I love is that it naturally fixed itself, which is that. Yeah. Well, that's true. Too. Because you hadn't been doing it, the less important parts fell away and you were able to just, you know, bring it down to the core, which is what every joke should be pared down to the core. Yeah. And my criticism is who's ever has Mr. Softy near them. I hear the ice cream. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It He's makes me makes me very nervous when I'm around <laughs> He's Mr. Softy. Passing by. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. John, John, you're you're you live in uh, Dublin, Ireland, and uh, as yep. a culture, you're not uh, the the Irish are not a very critical people per se. I would imagine. Uh, it depends um, what you mean, I suppose. Uh, I, I mean, kind of I mean that New York New Yorkers are sarcastic. That's what I mean. Oh, Irish are <laughs> desperately sarcastic. <laughs> Yes, and critical, char and charming, critical. charmingly sarcastic. Char it's a bit of, it's kind of a charming sarcasm. Being criticism. a third generation Irish person myself, mm. in part, uh, when you're out on stage, do you ever mm. look at a comic and just know what they're doing is wrong, but what, don't, like if I, but don't if know I was, what to say to them about it? If I'm observing them perform, yeah. <clears throat> um, sometimes. I'm not an expert by any means, but I, my biggest problem, I think, is I see people letting them, letting people dictate them. You know, like so they look into a crowd and they'll just totally let go of their set and they'll start talking to one or two members and they'll let them sort of take over the gig. Mm. And I, I think uh, too many of them. I teach. I think you said that at the start. So I, I learned so quickly mm. when people look unhappy. It's not as personal as you actually think it is. Um, obviously, if the entire crowd look unhappy, you got a problem. But like if, if, if a lot of them are laughing, and if some of them are screaming with laughter, and then there's like two miserable looking people in the front, you know, uh, you don't need to derail your set and let that totally, yeah. you know. But mm -hmm. I, I understand why it's hard. But I see really experienced comedians do this, even torpedo their own sets because they mm. just they, they just don't like the look. It's kind of an egotistical thing, I think. But, um, I guess that's a, that they take that as a criticism that doesn't matter that the rest of the room is laughing that one person's not getting it and they're going to try to make an example yeah. of them and often it backfires even with their experience because 
the crowd kind of senses that you know mm. they don't need to. So that's, yeah, I, that's that's what I see a lot of when, when I look at people. I, I never do that. I never see the the reason to do that. Uh, I, I was a waitress that uh, worked at a restaurant. She said something great, and it, it it sunk in exactly what you're talking about. Like like you say, the whole audience would be great except for one table, and this waitress had that you know that kind of smoking voice, and she goes, "There's mm. two kinds of people that go out to go out to to eat. People that go out to eat. People that go out to bitch." Mm -hmm. And she was totally right. There, uh, there are people yeah. that will go out and refuse mm -hmm. to have a good time. Everything will be mm -hmm. wrong, and the sure. comic's just one of them. Hey, yeah. I want to be. I want to be miserable. I'm going to go to a comic. <laughs> I'm telling yeah. you, there are people mm -hmm. that go there to have a bad time, and you know, and share yeah. it with everybody. Right. <laughs> now you, uh, Alan, you, you should be too. Yeah. You, Alan, you're an actor, and uh, you've, mm -hmm. you've been in some uh, at times, yes, <laughs> uh, rather, rather professional settings. So. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I would imagine that uh, you might have been directed or uh, given some sort mm. of. Uh, challenge as an actor that you might yeah. not have agreed with how would you deal with that yeah. well it, it is different yeah. you're, you're right it is different Emma. and and here's one thing i learned not to say when you're auditioning uh a director will give you a line reading I've, and I've, it's happened to me twice at auditions the director gave me a line reading and i said could you please not give me a line reading and that person looked at me like they wanted to kill me <laughs> the audition was over mm -hmm. and so i learned mm -hmm. never to say that again what mm -hmm. i had to say was hey i wonder if you could give me the line that leads into that line mm -hmm. but yeah i literally saw their faces change like you know the subject is over mm -hmm. you know so i was i just did a project where i i actually uh asked for a line reading yeah because it's in spanish oh well and I, really <laughs> it, so I yeah. wanted to know how they wanted it to sound because i was saying yeah. it my pronunciation is fine but but I'm not a hundred percent on the precise meaning, yeah. so I needed a line reading. So once well, in a while, it's absolutely. There's been times where I just, you know, how sometimes your brain just doesn't click into something, and there's a line, and you just don't get it, and you've read it fifty times, and then I'll finally go, "Could you just give me a line reading?" And they give it to you, and I go, "Oh, thank you." But that's, that's <laughs> but that's different, you know. So, or if it's in Spanish. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Richie, when you're when you're on stage and you're uh, you're you're. Fu there are times when you, you're kind of going, uh, you might forget the punchline, or you might have uh, just fumble through the setup and not know. How forgiving are you to yourself when you do that? Do you do you make yourself angry? <laughs> when you get upset? Very annoyed. If, I, if I'm doing this joke and I forget a part, a part of it, or I forget the end of the, the part of it, usually I don't forget the punch, I forget a, a element in between. And if ever get off stage, I say to myself, <laughs> Yeah. You find yourself upset about it. Upset. You can, you can yeah. Crush yeah. for 20 minutes and you'll remember the one, one? joke. You yeah. Right, 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 mm. right. I have learned not to argue with people when they say, Hey, good set. Cause to me, it's like, Oh, that was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, say, thank you. I don't, I don't say, Oh, I forgot this. I forgot that. I say, thank you. I had a blast. Yeah, Cause it's, they don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's all you can say. It's the ultimate no. backwards compliment, right? It's like, yeah, oh yeah, well, great no, set. A lot of times they, they legit mean because what they saw was all the parts that worked. They did mm. not well, that's a good point. Where you got lost for you know eight seconds or whatever, and mm. uh, so you'll you know go home like oh, God, why did I screw up that one joke? I've been working on it, yeah. and all they did was laugh, and they don't they and, don't remember. And I so, I've seen Broadway shows for the most fun part of it was when the actors screwed up because now the audience yeah. is all with you, always human. They made a mistake, and it was the best part of the show. So well, that's another I, I, thing. I mean, as a comic, uh, being able to turn it around. Uh, Johnny Carson was the god of mm, that. Mm, like if yeah. a joke failed, he would just mm. turn it on its side and go, yeah. "Well, that mm. didn't." Yeah, right. You know, he, like, he made it part of his act. Yeah. yeah. He, he kind of yeah. built it in almost. That was his strength. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I, I, I had some advice mm -hmm. from an older comic when I was starting out. Older meaning he was doing it longer than me. He was actually mm -hmm. younger than me. Mm -hmm. Most comics are. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, yeah, he said to me, you know, they don't know what you're going to say. Mm -hmm. They don't have the script in front of them. Lines. They don't yeah. know your lines at all. So if you screw it up, most of the time, they, they it goes unnoticed, yeah. except by me. Yeah. <laughs> scriptwriter, scriptwriter Rob, going right. oh, wrong, right, right. And I, you know, I I have legitimately had my feelings hurt. Mm. You know, sometimes I, I and again too, I think it wasn't 
done necessarily on purpose by anybody. But I would look, you know, to somebody, especially when I'm with a comic I admire or I, I really respect as a, as an artist, and um, they kind of dismiss me, you know, or dismiss something I might say or do. Yeah, and uh, is much worse than being. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that we yeah. know, right? But I'm yeah. telling you, in the context of our our, our craft here, right? If mm. I'm saying, you know, I, uh, you know what, uh, you know what, uh, Middleman said. Yes, yeah, Steve Middleman was on the show yesterday. We talked briefly about Seinfeld. And he mentioned something. He just offhandedly said, Seinfeld does not take any suggestions. Doesn't take any any suggestions at all. You cannot make and this is a guy who's known him for 45 years. Yeah. Been friends with him for 45 years. Doesn't take any suggestions. Mm. Can't give him one. Yeah. Hmm. He told Larry David to screw off. Yeah. <laughs> After they split besides, a billion besides bucks. Larry. Besides Larry. <laughs> yeah. Well, that makes sense because he's has such a, an individual style and anything you, you're mm. going to say is like, how are you going to help him? Yeah. Hey, hey, John, what do you think about ego? I mean, you think ego, how important is ego to your... Uh, your ego is extremely mm. important because... Is, <laughs> is your name John? Excuse me. <laughs> right, 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 right. That was her point. That was, that was her point. Yes. I know. I get it. I get it. You mean to comedy in general or to my comedy? Uh, to your oh. comedy. Let's talk about um, your comedy. I don't think I have a huge amount of ego. I don't think ego works for my persona as much as self-deprecation and sort of being the, f yeah, like a little playful ego, but usually when I'm just like, a well, I'm not talking about the performance. I'm talking about oh. inter internally. Sure. Yeah. Internally. Well, definitely, it's definitely, I'm a driver for sure. Cause I think, I think we all, <clears throat> I think all the humans have this desire for greatness. That's just egotistical, obviously. But I think some people have, <clears throat> people have that It's a natural thing. I, I think everyone has it to some extent. Um, so I think that's your ego just kind of saying, you know, but then uh, but then you've also got to kind of factor that in with the reality of life and not uh, kind of just being kind of content as well with the process of just getting better. It's kind of a weird one because I, I think it's it can be a very useful thing, ego, but I think it can also destroy it could destroy you, too, if if you let it sort of eat away at you. I think I, I'm not entirely sure. How it works for me, I definitely think the desire to be good is somewhat egotistical, but I don't think it's um, I don't think it's overly negative in my in my case. Hmm. I think I think we probably have all met that comic who really seems so full of themselves and so hmm. confident. Just that one. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to name names here. We're not going to disparage anybody. But but here's my point about that. Many of them, in my experience, are successful at stand-up comedy because they have that ability mm. to be as, as egotistical. I hate using that term. Yeah. Um, well, well, and and, 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 and on, yeah. about what they do. Yeah. But when it, interpersonally, it's a it's a real drag to be around them. Mm. But then I I mean I I work with this guy and he just not would not stop talking about himself. Oh. Would not stop talking about I'm, everyone he knew. I'm, I'm sorry. Just, I'm sorry. Would just not stop, right? <laughs> yeah. But when he got up on stage, man, he he crushed. I mean, he and yeah. every time I ever work with him, he crushes. Mm, so I'm yeah. like, all right, well, you know, that's kind of. And I've seen other guys like that too. It's just, mm. uh, you know, it, it, I guess it. it what for me is the um, lack of that sometimes. Mm. And I, it gets to almost to a point of despair where I'm not good enough to do this. I, I, yeah. Every well, night, I, I think every night, you know. Yeah. I think there's a difference between also between having an ego and being confident. And I don't know who you're talking about. It doesn't matter. May not even realize that he sounds egotistical. He's probably just talking because he feels good. Yeah. And, and mm. so it may not even be egotistical. It may just be he's confident and, and that's just his his product, like a salesman would be talking about selling toilet paper. He's, his product is him. So he's talking about himself. Mm, that's a good way of putting it. But he's. Oh, yeah. Women have an expression. Mm. Lord, grant me the confidence of a mediocre white man. <laughs> mm. I'm saying this because you will not find that level of ego in most women doing comedy. Mm. Uh, because we've been taught to degrade ourselves mm. for the most part, to not think of yourself mm. as all that. And that you have to work harder. 
and, and yet, and yet, and there are women who are eh, dangerously ego. Believe me, I've I've been uh, mm. I, uh, in uh, comedy. Right? Yes, I've seen. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, I've, there are some... I've had people threaten to claw my eyes out. I've had that. that whoa, oh, <laughs> whoa, That's beyond never... ego. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not naming <laughs> names, but it was a very unpleasant time. Yeah. Wow. One of, the, one of the reasons it happened was because at the time I was actually writing about comedians for newspapers. Something I wrote about her was edited brutally by somebody who wasn't me, and uh, it changed the message entirely. So she wow. thought I was saying a horrible thing that I was not saying. I hadn't Holy even seen man. the article as it came out until uh, her agent called me to complain and say, look out, she's going to claw your eyes. <laughs> but that, you know, that definitely exists. And, and I do want to say that as a professional critic, um, I never took it upon myself to tell anyone they weren't great because that was never, you know, I was there to promote comedy, mm. but my label was comedy critic. Right. And once I, I know there's been at least a few people who hated me because I said something 100% true. Like they got mm. a few laughs. Mm. That's not what they wanted to hear. And they took, they took that as an insult. I'm like, wasn't an insult. I'm literally reporting on the show I saw. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I yeah, think it's I think I think mm -hmm. it's also it, it's good if you can not take things personally. You I know can't take I personally. know that's hard yeah. sometimes, but yeah. mm -hmm. like 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 what you said, Rob. Like you turned it around somehow. You you were able to step back from it and go, okay, you know, if this were someone else being told that, it's hard to do that, mm -hmm. and yeah. especially in the moment if someone's just you know <laughs> ripped you a new you know what are you a new you know what hole um but if you're able to, to take it in and then like and, and just go all right you know that's the way this person is talking right now and step back and and look at it and see maybe this makes some sense maybe and also not everything everybody says even makes sense i had i had uh a guy uh what, what's the guy's name max because it's not it's not an insult max not max del Celli. max uh he's passed oh, away I, I, um you know, Max Docelli's still alive. Yeah, not, uh, uh, he's passed away, but it doesn't matter okay. uh, because it wasn't a mean thing. He said, he said, I think you should be a, do a Southern character and just be a Southern guy and talk like that. And it's a good idea. And it was, a, it's a good idea, actually. It just wasn't for me, but well, that, 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 it was an observation. It depends if it's coming from a professional level or not. It's like you said, it's like, yeah, I've had tons of people like audience say, you should do a bit about, or you need yeah. to talk about, or why don't you talk more about? Mm. It's like because that's not my act. Yeah. Well, it might be right, but for you, it wasn't. So, but it, sometimes yeah, exactly. it's right. Well, yeah. it's like they are. They are often telling women comics in particular, you can't be dirty. You can't talk about <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that from a woman. Yeah. And you know, and then you have to decide. It's like, well, do I want to accept the fact that maybe yeah. people don't want to hear that from all women, or do I say I don't care? And do what I want. Yeah. Um, some of the dirtiest know. comics that were women, I just, I was just like, for some reason, I was just like, this is freaking hysterical. I don't. Mm. It was on because a, it was another level. Not do it. Mm. That when some women, yeah. you know, unleash, it's amazing. And it, and it was um, totally organic too. And I was just like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So. And and yeah, it so it it comes down to as far as receiving criticism, where it's coming from. So yes, the the audience as a whole, but individual audience members telling you to do one thing or another, um, not useful. Um, my, my dad, my dad was an art, my parents are both artists and they had the best description ever, which is picture a battlefield with thousands and thousands of people fighting and knives and swords. And then, you know, there's only a few left and then it comes down to one survivor, right? <laughs> And mm -hmm. then this other guy comes down from the mountain and kills that guy. That mm -hmm. guy's the critic. That guy's the critic. Oh, <laughs> you're wow. out there fighting and just wow. trying to get seen in our business. And then one critic comes down out of nowhere. Yeah. And said, nah, you're not good. Like, where were you when I was battling everybody? Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know what I found that um, have you ever anybody ever seen this movie Pumping Iron? With uh, mm. well, all right, so, so parts of it years all right, ago. So this yeah. is a yeah. documentary about Arnold Schwarzenegger when he comes yeah. to the universe, right? And in, in the movie, he uh, he's competing against Lou Ferrigno, the uh, mm. famous weightlifter and actor. And uh, Lou's younger, and he's um, certainly not as sophisticated at all. And Arnold had won it seven times already. And the most interesting part of the movie is the things that Arnold would say to Lou Ferrigno 
to shake his confidence. And I was, I, you know, I, I, I learned a lesson. I love that movie. So I, I knew early on in comedy, many times people, it's a very competitive business, mm -hmm. very competitive, even at, even at the very, at, at the levels that, you know, Rich and I are at really, you know, the people that's, they want that stage time. They want the appreciation from mm. the booker. They want the people to say when they're leaving, that guy was the best, right? So you, you'll often get, you know, kind of this, it's not so much criticism is, you know, they, they'll say, I would have done it this way, or you should have, you know, your timing was a little off there. And wow, that was a great set. But, you know, next time, you know, cut the words in half. Yeah. Oh, so, so, sometimes it's just absolute jealousy. Mm. When I, of course, now I'm going to brag. You know, when I did The Sopranos, uh, my mm. two episodes, uh, I, I invited a, uh, a friend over to see it. And he was a fellow performer who's no longer a comic. Now he's a writer. And he watched it. You know, it was a short scene. And it was with me. It's me and Gandolfini. And when it was over, he goes, that's it? Mm. That's it? Right. And then I think he said something <laughs> like, yeah, that, that, that Gandolfini guy, how did that guy ever get a career? <laughs> And if that had happened today, I would have right. gone. I would have gone. The door is right here. Thanks for showing up. Don't come back till I hear congratulations later. Mm -hmm. Had nothing to do with me. He was mm -hmm. totally jealous, and uh, had nothing to do with me. Richie, when you're on stage, you have a lot of flair, right? Thank you. You, you dress up. You, I mean, you really go all out, and you've got almost a character the way you dress. Uh, do you ever get criticism about that? Has anyone ever said to you? Maybe I get you compliments, it? not criticism. They said great outfit, a good look. I don't never got any negative with my outfits. Never, yeah. Because I the reason I bring it up is I when I started comedy, I had hair, and I used to let it grow, <laughs> it really grew. Right. I I've always thought grow. you should have more hair in your comedy, uh, grow, Rob. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I let it grow really wild. I'm brand new. I'm really wild, right? I wore these crazy, funny t shirts. I had these purple sweatpants, shiny. <laughs> and I walked with sneakers, big, big, weird looking sneakers, right? And uh, I, that's how I started. First six months, I did it like that, you know? And then one night I'm in a comedy club and I'm doing it. You know, it was an open mic or a bringer or something I was on. And uh, a comic that I respect locally, his name is uh, George Gallo, big, big fish in the Long Island comedy pond, right? He, uh, he watched my set, and I was appreciative of, of that, and I wanted to hear from him. And he first, he, he just looked at me like I was crazy. And he said, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, wow. What are you doing? He said, go out and get, you're not that crazy, you're not Robin Williams, you know? <laughs> And at the time, I was more like Alan King. That's what I was. I was he said, go out and get yourself a jacket and a tie and go out there. I mean, I didn't move at all. I kind of held on. I was like, I'm one of these guys that holds on to the mic standing because he's kind of falling off the earth. <laughs> I'm like this. Yeah. And uh, at the time, I again, it come, where, to Amanda's point, it's a, it matters where it comes from. Because this guy, I mean, and, and he's the most, if you ever get to see George Gallo, mm -hmm. he's on the internet, go look at him. He is the most physical comedic. Mm -hmm. he's, I mean, he's really out there. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but he never dressed like I did. He, mm -hmm. he wasn't dressed like a clown, you know. <laughs> what am I, what are you, a that, clown? <laughs> that can work. Are you trying to lose me? Yeah. yeah that can work. Well, it works. <laughs> Richie's got Richie's got like a punk rock style. Wait, wait, I got my card here. If that right. can help at all, uh, it's not. What is it? You're not really going to see it. Uh, we can't see all the leather studs, but it's it, it's it's you know, again, criticism from people we respect in stand up. Well, at that um, point, it's not criticism; it's feedback. Yeah. It's feedback. By the way, did you did you did you take that to heart? Did you listen to what he said? And I did. And, uh, I did. I went. I went out and uh, probably not right away, but yeah. I, I I started wearing a jacket, mm -hmm. and I started looking at other comics that uh, were successful doing that kind of image. And yeah. uh, you know, today I I'm not quite that. And I used to I bought a leather blazer. And I was doing that kind of mm -hmm. thing for a while, but uh, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. you know what? And another comic pointed out to me, "Hey, look, I I didn't wear the leather blazer one day." He goes, "Where's your leather blazer?" 
that's like I'm I'm used to seeing you like that. That's like your character, you know. It's part of your persona mm. now. You gotta gotta wait. I said, oh, I don't want to be. I don't want to be that guy. Okay. Sean, when you get when you get uh when you get done, I mean, I know mm. you you do. You're a very analytical guy, right? You, mm. uh, I'm sure you tape a lot of your sets and mm. you uh, you review your videos and things. Mm. How 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 do you criticize? How, what, what's your process for? critically analyzing your performances oh that's a good question i don't i don't know that i have a, a process it's more of a it's it's something i'm still figuring out I, I do watch some videos i definitely don't watch all of them sometimes i just do too many or i have too many videos and i it kind of feels like it builds up and then um i just kind of maybe review one or I go back to them maybe in time if I if I see a bit that I liked but I I, I listen and uh, I try I try and write stuff from memory too I know that's not so um, people frown upon that but I like wow. writing and I like I like I just think people are always like you need to hear it exactly as it was etc but I just write down stuff after the set usually like I'd maybe like make a note of like what worked what didn't work what did I feel good saying um, what do I need to review? So sometimes I'll just isolate. Sometimes I'm doing sets and I know that a bit is fine and I did it well and I did it, you know, we got much the same reaction as I always did. Usually I'll, I'll just try and, I'll, usually if I'm doing a setup, maybe I, I have two or three new tags that I'm trying to get to work. Or So usually I'll just, I'll just think about did it work? Why didn't it work? Um, yeah, so like some days. I feel great and I, I, I'm full of energy and, I, and I, I'm very optimistic other days. I, I feel terrible. <laughs> and, um, you know, so I, I think it varies a lot. I wish I had a process. Give me one. <laughs> I mean, well, it sounds like you do. Actually. Yeah, it sounds like you do. Yeah. It sounds like you definitely do. I mean, that's something I, you know, we're, I get I get bogged down with the wording and everything. But, I, you know, it's a good point. How did how did I feel with this? I mean, what kind of. What kind of feelings did I have while I was actually performing this, and how did it affect my delivery, uh, or, or uh, the, what the impressions the you know, audience perceived because of that? Right? Again, it goes back to that energy thing. I thought I was connecting with the audience, and everybody thought it was, and then I watched the tape. And I go, "What is this guy? Am I on? What, am I? <laughs> am I?" Am I on oxy? Is this guy on oxy? <laughs> is he nodding out? You know? Uh, I, I love the fact that I love the fact that you pissed off Danny Aiello. Like, <laughs> That's not a good place to be. <laughs> I, I relive it quite a bit, both waking and sleeping. <laughs> uh, we uh, we're uh, usually we get lots and lots of uh, input from the people watching. So I uh, I think there might be something broken. Mm. Maybe, maybe people's fingers. <laughs> but if if you want to ask us a question, now's the time to do it. How do you, you handle criticism about your comedy? Mm. Well, and before we get to oh, go down, Alan, you want to say something? Well, I was just going to say, and especially in this uh, this internet world now, everybody has an opinion. <laughs> no, no, it's true. <laughs> I mean, you go on, you read a newspaper article, a newspaper article, an internet article, right? And there's comments for every article. It's like, do I need to see what everybody thinks about this puppy dog article? You know, it's like every, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, sure. Yeah, everybody's I mean, got an opinion now, so yeah, beware. Yeah, and and they're not afraid to share it in a. No. Well, we, we're going to do a show about heckling, obviously. And that's why a lot of comics don't yeah. want to wear colleges anymore. They show up and the whole audience is lined around the corner to tell them, you said the word and, and that's <laughs> offensive to anyone that, you know, exactly <laughs> has a brother and. and. <laughs> right. All right. So we're going to, uh, we're going to do a little, uh, little, a little ad, a little sponsorship thing that we do. And then we will, uh, we'll take the, uh, the voluminous questions here. All right, let me, let me read this copy. Type something up quick. <laughs> if you've ever shopped at fancy places like Walmart, you know the feeling of walking away in shock after seeing the bill. How would it feel to get all your favorite products at 99.98% discount? 
and get it without even leaving home. If you know where to look, you can find deals, bargains, and steals that are simply too good to pass up. However, the key is to search the internet for these bargains and deals. And that's exactly what this new website does. The best deals on the internet. This site is dedicated to tracking down the very best deals, making sure you get the very best savings possible. It says that at the end. Now's your chance to join a website with the best deals on brand name products. Save money on stuff you want. Get a new deal every day. I'm a winner! I'm a winner! I'm a winner! Congratulations to you all. How is this possible, you ask? It's easy with dealstrash.com. I won this non FAA compliance drone on dealtrash.com for only $7.14. Listen here. I just won this combine tractor, which retails for $364,000 for just under 47 cents. I won this authentic Egyptian mummy for only $87.32. Hey, these are not actors. They're just real simple people. Just like you. I just got all this for under a hundred dollars. Rhinoceroses sell for as little as five dollars. Magical leprechauns in their pots of gold, sixteen dollars. And congressmen are being bought for as little as nineteen dollars and ninety-nine cents. I only paid fifty-five dollars for these cryogenic hibernation chambers for me and my wife. There is a nominal charge for each bid. It's a fair price that we came up with and then we added a little bit more on. So now, it's a little more than fair. Okay, I figured it out. After adding up all my bids and what I actually paid for this camcorder, I purchased this $300 camera for $450. Wait, what? And here's the best part of all, our money back guarantee. If you don't win, just try and get your money back. And the shipping is free? free? Try it today. What do you got to lose? You can win this bridge. Took us three days yeah. to do that. I am. <laughs> I get as much mileage as I can out of that. Yeah. I'm signing up for that. Deal yeah. so trash dot. Deal trash dot dumb. dumb. Okay. Let me get out of here. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's look and uh, let's see what the viewers are saying. They just won't shut up. <laughs> just never won't shut up. Have you seen something? Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Our soul comment for today's show. All right. We'll spend a half an hour on this. You're going to like this one. Matt. You're going to like this one. Okay. All right. Donna Moran Donna. says, Hi, Alan. <laughs> Love to you. And Sharon. Long time. Yeah. <laughs> I saw she was on the show yesterday. She was in spirit. Yes. <laughs> Or technically, it... technically, she had some challenges. But oh, all right. <laughs> well, she she was. Don't here. we? Don't we all? Don't we all? <laughs> Not me. I'm perfect in every way. <laughs> and that's why you have such good self criticism. That's good. <laughs> Do you know how we pronounce her surname in Ireland? We say Moran. Moran. Oh, Moran. Yeah. Moran. Oh, Moran. Yeah, it's an Irish. It's it an is Irish it. surname. It's an it is an Irish. Everyone said everyone outside of Ireland says Moran. So I guess what what can you do? It, it, looks, that... it looks like Moran. It does look like Moran. Yeah, but I mean, see, I'm I really don't know how to take that criticism. <laughs> saying she, <laughs> she loves me and Sharon. So which one of us do you love the most? That's a good question. <laughs> See, <laughs> we've, we've learned nothing over this hour. Really. I mean, think about it this. Just think about it this way. She mentioned Sharon, even though you're the one that's on the program. Yes, yes. So there you go. Yeah, I think all uh, of us are was, trying Amanda to figure was out right. <laughs> who exactly is Sharon? Is Sharon your mm. wife? Your she's daughter? She's your daughter? She's, she's my dog. My dog. <laughs> she's my dog. <laughs> she's my dog. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's oh, my wife. Oh, she's, she's come back in. Uh oh, here we go. Oh, is she? 
Now the real criticism uh, oh, begins. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. How can you see it, John? How do you see it? And I don't uh, see it. No, oh, now sure. you see it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now I can go home and cry. All right. There you go. Right. So thank you for sticking with us, Donna. Thanks, Donna. Yes. Yes. And the other, the yeah, other. Our favorite viewer. The, we actually have more viewers than we have panel right now. So wow. we're, we're so doing pretty good. Oh, five and a half. Five. We have. Right, we have if Mike well, I'm, well, I'm half so. <laughs> I'm a half wit. We have another comment. We have another comment. Oh my oh, god. Oh, wow. Hold on. Everybody wow. get excited. Stop, stop the show. Stop the show. I like this. It's the question. How can you see it, John? How uh, can you see Tracy, it? It's on the right Tra side. It's on the chat. Oh, oh you're seeing it before me though. Okay. Up. Tracy oh, on the B. chat. Oh. Tracy B. Simon says, Have you ever asked someone you admire for feedback or criticism? Yeah, good question. Oh. Good question. Uh, I, I I got something to share. I, I, I you know that question. that guy who just did the commercial. His name is Bob Nelson. Yes, he is uh, uh, one of those boomer comedians we were talking about earlier, Amanda, and uh, had a very successful career. And I got to know him. He's a great friend of mine now. And uh, I remember going to the diner with him once, and I was working on all these jokes. I had I was really I really I had like forty jokes on index cards and I brought them to the table and I just said, Hey, Bob, would you mind just listening? See what I said? So I'm reading, I'm, I'm going through the joke. I go, da -da 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 -da. I look at him. Nothing. Da -da 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 -da. Nothing. Da -da 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 -da. He starts eating his soup. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> like now he's being genial and nice. He wasn't disrespecting me in any way. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. he wasn't laughing out loud at this brilliant A material that I was trying to get his opinion about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then halfway through, because most of it was topical stuff, so he goes, "Hey, you know, I'm gonna. Uh, we, we, you should, you should, you should call Jimmy Brogan, who, who used to write for the Tonight Show. Call Jimmy Brogan. He." Mm. I'm like, I, I, yeah, sure, Bob. I'll pick the phone up and just call Jimmy Brogan. This <laughs> guy who works with the Tonight Show. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, but I, 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 I was legitimately disappointed that mm. he wasn't interested. Now, I don't blame the guy mm. because he had probably heard every one of those jokes in some form, fashion prior. Mm. You know, I was relatively new. I'm still relatively new when it comes to him. And um, on the other hand, you know, I'm always a little skeptical when somebody, you know, who I look up to and it kind of tells me I did a great job. Wow, that was a great job. You did something. Mm. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you trying to borrow money? <laughs> 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 but, you know, in Bob's defense, maybe he was just hungry. Oh, well, yeah. He, he's <laughs> always hungry. <laughs> he's always hungry, that guy. The, the reality is that. At, uh, we, we all started doing comedy because we love doing comedy. Yeah. But what that does is completely burn us out on 98% of comedy. Mm. So unless we hear something yeah. really different and unique, we're not all that impressed. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, because yeah. I, I, I actually have done like professional criticism. I have somebody send me a five minute video and give them feedback. And that's, you know, they pay me for that. And it's right. really fun. But it's hard because sometimes you yeah. like you gotta dig to find something to hang on to that makes the rest of the criticism worth even doing. Because you can't just tell someone, yeah, no, yeah. you shouldn't. Yeah. You can't do that and because yeah. nobody can say that. But mm -hmm. uh, if you watch enough of it, you get to where you can go. Okay, here's the thing you can work on. Here's what works yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, yeah. like I would rather have uh, a criticism from a bigger comic then uh hey that was fine because you know that tells me nothing yeah. and uh, yeah. it means they were listening they were like actively listening enough to see a thing that could be fixed as opposed to just yeah. hey good show which yeah. as yeah. we all know means nothing mm. absolutely well, here's a criticism, you know, you know, you did badly uh, when I was doing theater in college and uh, your friends would come back and go, hey, the set was amazing and the lights yeah. and costumes, <laughs> fabulous. Yeah. You know? One of my yeah. favorite stories is that <laughs> back in the day when there were three comics on a show, uh, the headliner, the feature and the mm. and the MC, the three of them would line up outside the door and, you know, greet people oh, as God. they left and someone <laughs> tells me oh. this story. Uh, they uh, mm. they went to the to the MC and said, "Great job!" And the feature, "You were awesome!" And then the mm. headliner, "Nice shirt." <laughs> wow. wow, wow. I I, wow. I had something similar over the weekend. Actually, Amanda, you know who I'm talking about. You know Mike Rice. I do. Of course. Yeah. So he, 
he was uh, he was uh, at a show that I was doing, and he came he came at the end, and everyone was warmed up. But Mike is amazing, so Mike just killed. And then this girl walks over, and she's just we're all just standing there, and she's straight over to Mike. You are amazing. Oh, I love this and that. And then she just walks straight by all the rest of us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you can't actually like Mike is just that good that you get used to it, but it's still kind of um, funny when it doesn't hurt me yeah. because I'm like, well, there was an objective quality difference here, but still, it's just yeah. entertaining. I, I'll tell you, I, it, it's it's uh, been my experience to open for a lot of bigger comics. Gen- generally, if I'm on a show that everyone's bigger That's than you, how it works. So. That's how yeah. it works, mm-hmm. right? And uh, I, somebody told me this is they, they, don't don't do never never get upset if they ignore you or they don't remember your mm-hmm. name or they don't come up because uh, uh, it's like you're in the diner, right? Yeah, uh, you're the pickle, <laughs> you're the coleslaw. Mm-hmm. They're here for the main course. You're here for the hamburger. Yeah. They're here for the hamburger. And you're not the hamburger. Different yeah. tastes too, you know. Comedy is such a person. I mean, someone can be amazing, and that's kind of across the board. But even within that, you can be an amazing. Like you could go see a professional comedian, you could laugh and enjoy it. But then you might still be like, it's not really for me. At the same time, I mean, you, they're professional, so they'll do a job and you'll respond and you'll laugh. But you're like, it's still not really my style of comedy. Yeah. You know. So it's interesting how. How that works? I've I've actually had not non-verbal criticism. Mm. <laughs> I won't mention who I was opening for, but it was a big person, mm. and and quite frankly, I didn't do that great, and I knew it didn't do that great because actually the the headliner act had something similar that I I usually opened with, and I couldn't open with that. And if you don't have your opener, you're totally screwed. So I just had an okay set. The manager of the the big act that was getting ready to go on came over, and uh, you could see that the big act's going, like you know. I'm standing right there, though. You could see, it, but you, you know, you know when people are gesturing or making faces. He, he kind of looked at him like, "So how do you do?" You know, and the guy goes, "No," mm. <laughs> but, but didn't say anything. It was all nonverbal. Yeah, and I was just like, "Sure." Uh, Tracy's question: Have you ever asked someone you admire yeah. for feedback? Oh, right. Um, there's a point at which, like, hey, will you watch my tape? Will you watch my tape? Will you watch my tape? Oh. Will you watch my set? I'm opening for you. You're on in six people, and I'm, mm. uh, it's very hard. You can't, you can't really make that ask a lot of the time. If they're mm. on a show with you, they're prepping. Uh, mm. If it's mm. you know, randomly sending them a video, like I said, I get paid to do that. Right. So just randomly, you know. That said, I know that some people I work with do want to hear what I have to say, and if I'm watching the show, and you know, I have the attention capacity to pay attention, you know, and they do say, Hey, what'd you think? I will, you know, I will try and make a constructive criticism, but, you know, randomly asking people you admire for advice or for help mm-hmm. is it, it's asking a lot. You're asking them to mm. basically give professional effort uh, to yeah. little old you. I'm and sure that, you, I'm yeah. sure in LA you see this all. Can you, would you, would you, would you mind reading my script? Can you, yeah. can you give me can you give me notes on my script? You know, LA, LA is is uh, somebody thirty years ago did a video where they just well walked. I think it was on Saturday Night Live or something. Where they just everybody walked had around a script. LA and randomly asked yeah. people, "How's the screenplay coming?" Literally <laughs> every single person had an answer because everybody here is working on that. <laughs> yeah. It is bonkers. New York is I not much different only now. Have two yeah. pilots. Like there you go. <laughs> right. Mm. <laughs> All right. Our last question from the audience comes oh, again from that, Donna Moran. Donna Moran. Oh, there is, it's not so much a con- question, but it's from the wisdom of Donna Moran. There is only one way to avoid criticism. Do nothing. Say nothing and be nothing. Oh, that should end the show. That's the some... corollary to that, though, is only the mediocre are always at their best. Mm. There we go. <laughs> oh. If you're always Ooh. doing a great job, then you're pretty dull. Mm. You know, if you take a that chance, we, you sometimes yeah. bite it, then at least you're working. That was Aristotle's son that said that. I All right, Aristotle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, and with that. <laughs> and then his daughter who said, why are you asking me? Right. The, uh, the, uh, the, I think the big takeaway here is that uh, if we appreciate criticism, constructive criticism, for what it is, it can be our best friend and it can be our most important mm-hmm. tool. Uh, that and uh, try not to be the pickle, be the hamburger. Exactly. <laughs> if you can. All right. Oh, I gotta, gotta write that yeah. down. <laughs> I, wanna, I, wanna th- I wanna thank everybody for watching. We're, uh, 
our panel today, Rich Parisi and uh, Amanda Cohen, John O'Keefe, and of course the uh, the great Alan Enlow. Oh, where? And you, all of you <laughs> folks that have been watching, all five of you, or six of you. <laughs> Thank you. For, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the show, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and a review. To catch all the latest from us, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Comedy Reset. One word, Comedy Reset. Thanks again, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye. See you. Bye-bye.